Um, I just wanted to say that I missed you guys. <laughs> uh, you know, the uh, three of you that didn't make it out last night. The three, the three of you that didn't make it out last night. We had an awesome, awesome time. And so I just want to encourage all of you guys to come back out tonight, everybody to come back out tonight where we're going to be talking about separation. You don't want to want to miss this. Also, I want to uh, let you guys know that from 1 to 2.30, I'll be in the Campus Ministries um, Center. And uh, you guys are welcome to come over and, and just kind of talk with me. I'm there for you. Whatever you want to talk about, pray about, uh, whatever the case may be, if the Lord just place that on your heart. I'm, I'm going to be there from 1 to 2.30. So I want to see all of you. Do you guys see this theme that I have here? I want to see all of you at Campus Ministries. I want to see all of you tonight. Do you guys, are you guys, are you guys with me? Are you guys? All right. Hello, Walls. I'll talk to the to the well, okay, you guys aren't, aren't, with, aren't with me today, but it's okay. So we're gonna pray, and uh, I'm gonna do a little bit recapping, and I am um, then gonna go directly into what uh, the Lord has for us today, if that's okay. Let's pray, God. We are so grateful for the opportunity to be here, and uh, we're just thankful for your spirit. And uh, Spirit of God, we just believe that you uh, want to do something so great in our hearts. And I just come in agreement with the prayer that was prayed uh, during the welcome. And, and uh, also just what uh, Chaplain Price was saying while she was up here. And uh, Spirit of God, we just give you total freedom to do what you have to do um, so that we won't leave this place the same. And so we just bless you. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're coming from Acts chapter 1 this morning, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And I'm just going to go ahead and read in your hearing. You can write it down and read it later. Acts 1, verse 8. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And you shall receive power. Yesterday, uh, we talked about how, how God wants to take us from where we are to where he wants us to be. And we talked a little bit, a bit about John the Baptist and how uh, the Lord actually strategically placed John the Baptist. I mean, he could have sent John the Baptist at any point in earth's history, but he strategically placed him to to, to be in, in position to, to, uh, to kind of uh, prepare the people for Jesus' grand appearing. And we know that, that God has that same thing over us from his perspective, looking at us. He wants us to be his witnesses, but not only his witnesses, but his witnesses who are preparing the world for his grand appearing. I'll never forget uh, when I got to meet the president of the United States of America. Isn't that awesome? I got to meet him. And um, i never forget, like I was standing there and, you know, Air Force One is coming in and it looks like it's coming straight for you because you're standing there on the runway. Has anybody ever stood on a runway? Like as the plane is coming, I see one person like all the way in the back and I'm just, I'm just grateful you're here today. So like, so he, the Air Force One is just coming and it's coming, it looks like it's coming straight for you, but you know, it's not going to hit you. And all of a sudden it lands right there and, and everything's just quiet and still and and then the door opens and sure enough Barack Obama he just steps out right and all of a sudden there's this big uproar and we're all waving and this then the other but what I noticed what I noticed is that the people before he got there had to prepare us for his arrival. They had to like, you know, put us in our proper places and, you know, in order to receive him. And, and not to mention, did they put us where we, they, they wanted us to be? They made sure that we were not where we shouldn't be. Are you guys with me? And so they're preparing us to meet him. And I just remember thinking to myself, I was bubbling over and I was like, I was like a little kid. I was like, man, this must be what it's going to feel like to see Jesus come. Like I was so, I was just like in that thing. And when he stepped out and just for you ladies who are wondering, he is just as cute in person as he is on TV. <laughs> 
And so God wants to like strategically place us. And I'm telling you guys that he wants to, he wants us to be his witnesses. And he wants us to be that generation that prepares a world for his second coming. And it should bother us when people aren't positioned in the right place. Like our friends, our family members, ourselves, when we're not positioned in the right place, it should bother us because we have to be positioned in the right place in order to receive, receive Jesus when he comes. And so we talked about that yesterday. And then we talked about last night how a fundamental deception of the enemy is to, to place an overarching emphasis on our love for Jesus, on our love for Jesus. But the power of the gospel is not in how much we love him. It's in how much he loves us. And see, we can trust a God who loves us. We can trust him to move us from where we are to where he wants us to be because we know like he had so much love for us. First John 4 says that it was manifested in him giving his son for us. I mean, it wasn't created after he didn't, you know how you guys, we talked about it last night. You know, some of you, you, you think a person is okay. You're dating them. You're not really, you're like, oh, we might fall in love later, you know, <laughs> or what have you. No, nobody in here. And so like he, he, uh, you know, he loves us so much that it was just like this manifestation of his love. He had to show it in some way. It was just so, so much of it. He had to show it. And, and so we, we, some of us surrendered to that love yesterday and we can trust it. We can say, God, whatever you want to do, it's all right with us because you have our total trust. We, we, we rest in your love for us. Right. And so today I want to talk to you all a little bit about the Holy Spirit, because not only does God want us to see this thing from his perspective and to know that he loves us. See, we think that when God begins to place us where he wants us to be, that ultimately he's just going to just kind of push us out there and leave us on this limb, you know, to, to, to kind of die <laughs> by ourselves. But that's not what God wants to do. He actually wants to give you power to do what it is he wants you to do or where and to be where it is he wants you to be. And here it is in Acts. And he says, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And I want to stop right there. And of course, I don't have time to really deal with this in its context. But I want to tell you this, that that the that the uh, the the uh, disciples are there. And and, uh, you know, a lot of people say that they were they were uh, preparing for the Holy Spirit to fall. And I want to suggest that the Holy Spirit was going to fall whether they pre were prepared or not. Jesus had already declared it. And I want to tell you guys that whether we are prepared or not, if not, if the Holy Spirit won't fall on you, he, there's somebody in their home down in St. Joe or Benton Harbor who is praying for an outpouring of, of God's Spirit and, and, and he's going to fall. It's already been prophesied. It's already been told. And so, so I believe that because the Holy Spirit was going to fall, they prepared themselves. And so I think that it's in coming upon all of us because we know we've, we've heard it all of our lives that the Holy Spirit is, is going to fall. And I believe that he is doing something so amazing on this campus already. This, is, this week of prayer is just a small part of something greater, something bigger that he's already doing. But he's going, to, he's going to fall. And I think that it's incumbent upon us to begin to prepare ourselves for that because God wants to give us power. And I just think about the disciples there and, and the, and, and Jesus is like, look, wait for it. Don't move. Don't, don't go ahead and try to, try to start doing, you know, something or, or everything or ministry or, or whatever. Don't, don't start yet. Just wait. Wait for it. Because, see, God knew that the disciples would need power to speak truth to power. See, Jesus knew that the disciples would need power to withstand jail sentences. He knew that they would need power to, 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 to preach and to sing and to, to, to stand up against social injustice. Oh, you guys aren't with me today, but it's okay. I'm hoping that y'all wake up. Hey. Like he knew that they needed power to do what it was that he needed them to do. Let me tell you guys this. When I was in, uh, I was a sophomore in, in college, um, 
My freshman year, let's just chalk it up to like I just did whatever and it went in the X-Files, okay? It went like it had to go in the X-Files. My freshman year was one of those type of years. And so I, but the Lord had a totally different plan for me. And so my sophomore year, I'm sitting in an assembly kind of like this one. And I think I probably went there by accident or, you know, I probably needed a worship credit. You know, whatever the case may be, I found myself there. And I can't remember what the sermon was about. I can't tell you who preached because I was there. I wasn't paying attention. I didn't care. I was like doing whatever I needed to do. I was talking to somebody and, you know, whatever. But all of a sudden the appeal was made. The appeal was made. And and I just remember the Holy Spirit arresting me. He like arrested me and he's like, Rebecca, get up and go to the front. I mean, like I feel him lifting me out of my chair. It was so surreal. I'm pushing people out of the way. I'm like, move, I gotta get to the front. I didn't know why I had to get to the front. I just know that the Holy Spirit was like, get to the front. I need you to get to the front. And as soon as I get to the front, I fall on my face and I began crying out to God because I knew my fr- <laughs> what my freshman year was like. <laughs> I knew what type of life I had lived. And so I'm there like God. I had, and you guys don't even know, besides the, the choices that I had made, the bad choices that I had made, I had also experienced homelessness and, 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 and living in the Salvation Army. And I have been robbed at gunpoint, like a gun to my head, like pressed against my head. I have experienced all that. And so I'm crying out to God. I'm like, God, I should not be here right now. And the reality is, whether you have experienced things like I've experienced or not, whether you've had an, an okay life, you don't deserve to be here either. And I remember just the Holy Spirit just just kind of cupping me in his in his in his arms. And and I remember just crying and I thought I was the hardest person since Tupac. Y'all know who Tupac is? That was the hardest person. And so for me to be crying in front of like all these people, I was just like, what is going on? And the Holy Spirit told me, he was like, you have to be baptized. And so then I find a pastor on campus and sure enough, I told them, I said, I need to be baptized. And they were like, when? I said, today, if possible. I just knew that the Holy Spirit was telling me that I had to do that. And so sure enough, that Saturday, that was like a, a, I don't know that, I don't know what day it was. But that Saturday, the next Saturday, I was in the baptismal pool. Now, anybody will tell you that I hated speaking in public. I hated it. I did. I don't, I I used to shake like this, like you could probably see me standing there like this. And so the first time I ever felt God calling me to get up front and, and, and speak to a group of people, my sister was there and I'll never forget what she said to me after. She was like, the Lord must be in your life because she knew that I was, I was that person that just could not stand and speak in front of people. And what I'm trying to tell you guys is, is that when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of you. He gives you power to do what he needs you to do. He doesn't just leave you out there on a limb, you know, like just to fend for yourself, but he's right there with you every step of the way. When you read in the book of Acts, they did not speak unless the Holy Spirit gave them unction. They didn't go into Asia if the Holy Spirit tells them not to go into Asia. They did whatever the Holy Spirit told them to do. And it's such a a crucial point because at the end of the day, God wants to do something so miraculous. That word for power is dunamis, like that miraculous power he wants to give to you and me, the ability to be his witnesses in all of the world. Like Jesus knew the magnitude of what he needed the disciples to do. He was going to change the world by virtue of this small group of people. You don't hear me. He was going to change the world by virtue of this small group of people. He was going to change the world by virtue of this small group of people. And he knew that they were going to need power to do it. God wants to change the world by virtue of every last single person in this room. And I believe if you if you could just hear me on this, like just hear my heart, hear my heart. 
God has been speaking to you and he's been talking to you. And, uh, you know, first of all, he's asking somebody like, can you just join up with me? Can you just join up with me? Can you make me your savior? Can I come in and, and change your life? He wants you to start there. And then he's calling, calling somebody else. He's like, man, I, there's something for you to do. I need you to do it. You, I need you to do it. Nobody else. Don't look to the left or to the right. I need you to do it. And he's telling you, like, look, if you let me lead you, if you let me guide you, I'm going to give you this portion of my spirit. And, and I am going to, to use you to change the world. And I know for our generation, we want to be a part of something bigger than ourselves, don't we? I mean, how much bigger does it get to change the world? And I'm telling you guys that, that it might look like I, I am an unapologetic revolutionist, okay? Like I am. I, I believe like we should go out there and just, just, <laughs> just change stuff. <laughs> you know, whatever it is, just stuff, just change it. <laughs> but I believe that, that like God is calling some of you. There are things that need to happen within our church. I mean, there, we are a generation who has become disillusioned with the seven day Adventist church. Don't leave it, change it. Don't leave it, change it. We, there, are, there is somebody in here that can single-handedly help every homeless person in Benton Harbor. There's somebody in here who, who, can, who can create something or, or do something and, and God is calling you. We're going to talk a little bit about that more as the week goes on. We're going to narrow in about that, those burdens that he's placing on you. But I'm telling you guys that, that right here, right now, there are things that you can do. And I love that you all have, have a campus ministry team that, that will support that. Like go, go and talk to them and help them, uh, let them help you navigate through, through, through this burden that God has been placing upon you. And, and wh whether it's to change the Adventist church, whether it's to change a, a Barrian Springs, because do you know, I know this was the truth when I was here, that there were still people here in Barrian Springs, as small as it may be, who did not know who Seven Day Adventists were. Or that there's this, this high rate of domestic violence on this campus. I mean, God is calling you to something so much bigger and so much better. And he wants to give you this power to do what he needs you to do. And he's calling you to wait. Just wait a little bit. Wait before him in his presence. And I don't know like what your prayer life is like or what your, you know, your time with, with, with God is like. But I want to suggest to you guys that if you just kind of spend a little time waiting, waiting for this promise of power that he wants to give you. That you're going to see in your life that he's going to start directing you every step of the way. And you're going to start to see how he's going to use you to change little things, to change people, to change a, a community, to change the world. Power. Holy Ghost power. That's not some small thing like, like Philip was, was taken up by the Holy Spirit. I mean, can you imagine like you walk in on a campus with your friend and all of a sudden you look and your friend is like, over in University Towers? <laughs> like, how do he get there? The Holy Spirit just needed him there. I mean, this isn't made up stuff. This is like real stuff. And he wants to give us this type of power. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close here. And I wanted us to kind of touch and agree. I'm, I'm a little low on time. Like, I wanted us to be able to pray together, like just in this moment. Maybe, maybe we still can. Maybe you can just turn. And, and this is just going to be a prayer time. So if you feel the need to talk, like, I'm just going to ask you if you can wait like three minutes and 37 seconds to talk. But I want you to just grab the person next to you. 
And so we want God to do something like uh, just send a revival on this campus, right? Which I believe he's already started. Like we want him just to pour out his spirit on his on this campus. Like I want people in Texas to say, man, something is happening at Andrews University. The power of the spirit is there. And the entire state of Michigan has been impacted. So just grab the person next to you. And this is what we are specifically going to pray. Like, God, I need your power in my life. I need your power in my friend's life, whoever you're praying with. God, we need your power on this campus. We need you to send your spirit to direct us and guide us in what it is you would have us to do for this time. How can we be your witnesses? How can we be your witnesses? How can we prepare for your second coming? Go ahead and grab the person and Pastor Chaplin, Chaplin, Mike Polite is going to close from, from the front. So go ahead, grab the person next to you. And we're praying specifically for the Holy Spirit, not a test. We're not praying for anything else, specifically for the outpouring of God's Spirit.